Yo, and welcome to the third segment of the El Camino Adventures where we push this old rig to our limits and we also enjoy some life, have a lot of fun, and then we set out for a 1300 mile drive to Texarkana, Texas. So let's just dive right into it. Chris has me sticking my head out the window every time we have to get the right light. <laughs> you can't see anything looking out the back, so I have to find a mirror somewhere in the junkyard maybe. Am I getting the right lane? No. No? No. How about now? No. <laughs> uh, how did people drive these cars back in the day with no right side mirror? Oh, now it's got still. Uh. Underground parking, don't mind if I do. And being out of sun is great because we have a new development. The brakes are starting to get a little bit of a fade to them, so if I apply them, and sitting at a traffic light, I noticed they, they start fading ever so slightly. And after doing that a few times, that well, the red brake light was on a second ago. But well, let's check that brake fluid level. And luckily, we do have the master. Probably should have thrown it in before, but yeah. Didn't have a brake fade the entire time we've been driving, but now that that bore has been cleaned out, uh, with the brakes going up and down, it's probably, uh, yep, actually, level's not too low. It's, it's the... Only the back one's level's going down a little bit. Since those brake cups have been going up and down the cylinder, probably cleaned off the sludge that was sealing up the pitting in there. And we're all set up. Should be bada bing, bada boom. I, I uh, will mention that the brake fade doesn't always mean a master cylinder. It could be a, a caliper leaking, a brake hose leaking, or a wheel cylinder. But in this case, we, we did check the brake leaks already. We do have cardboard down on the ground so we don't make a mess. Oh yeah, sweet, that's good sound. We did spray some PB on there. Let's see if this one goes. Oh, all right, beautiful. Gotta love these desert cars. Like, you wouldn't ever have that happen with Northeastern car. Oh, tell me that pipe's in the way. No, it's not. Wagner, made in USA. At this point, compare both, make sure they look just about identical. Compare your holes before you go bolting it on, that they're the same, and do a push rod measurement. Uh, I talked about that in the last video. You can see where the fluid was leaking past, so if we didn't replace this right away, this would have uh, been leaking fluid into the brake booster over time. And this is your, your push rod adjustment. Good idea to put some lithium or grease on there, or brake, silicone brake grease on there. A little Vaseline, I like to put those on the brake lines underneath the flare, uh, not inside the line, and on the threads, that way they come off in the future. Or, you know, silicone brake grease or whatever you got. Fill her on up. And just letting this gravity bleed here, a minute later, we got fluid dripping out of the rear port. And now I'll cap that one and wait till it drips out of the front port. Minute later and the front one's dripping, so I'm now gonna cap both holes uh, lightly. And Jen, go ahead and slowly start depressing the brake pedal. And uh, this is a bench bleed on the car. Go ahead, all the way down, maybe like a couple inches. Yep, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, stop. All right, uh, let it up. And now slowly press it down again. Hold it there and don't let go. That should do it. All right, now you can release the pedal and then slowly bring the pedal back down a little bit and tell me how it feels. Go ahead, just start pumping it a little bit, but not, not too hard or fast. Otherwise, it's gonna squirt on out of here. Yeah, keep doing that. Got some bubbles coming up, so that's just residual air that, that was up in here. Yeah, keep doing that. I'll let you know when the bubbles are stopped. Clean off these fittings and make sure to recheck for leaks after starting it and having power brakes. How's the pedal feel? It's pretty firm? It's, yeah, it feels pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, it's looking great. Right, we got the retaining ring out of here. Let's take a look inside holy yeah look at all that crud in there and here i'll just uh, dump it into here oh yeah yeah we really should have replaced this before for 20 dollars it's like come on why would you and there is the rust on the bottom of the bore i was referring to so again after using the brakes a bunch that's been kind of cleaned off and that's why we ended up with the brake fade this sludge in here is probably what was keeping it from fading before but you know always just put a master on these cars i mean on flat ground here in phoenix it's one thing but as we go and hit some mountain roads definitely want a new master we'll flush out those brake lines later when we get some more brake fluid 
stop it in the Goldwater Brewing. See what it's all about. Cheers. Gus, you meet your girlfriend, Judy. You already so... forgot about Daisy. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. No, it's not his birthday. Yet. Oh, happy birthday, guys. <laughs> so, a quick scooter run, and we got some more brake fluid to do a proper flush on it. Now, get pumping. No. <laughs> get out of this, this sauna down here. It's, it's really hot. It seemed like a great idea getting out of the sun, but apparently it's 100 degrees more. I can't breathe down here. It's, like... yeah, it's very hot. For your own good, buddy. You know, we start over at the passenger rear and then work your way around. Look at those bleeders open right up. I was able to borrow the washer tank vent hose because we definitely don't need that. My strong, firm, steady strokes up and down. That's what I'm talking about. New master, new fluid. Got rid of all that old dark fluid. Evening hike. Gus is not having it. He is a little, a little fed up. That uh, beautiful sunset up here. A sunset. We're gonna try and stay here tonight at Usury Mountain Campground, but the whole place is booked, so there's a few of these host sites open that have large canopies over them, and then uh, we're gonna just see if we can get away with it. See how that goes. This passenger tail light needs some attention. I, you know, the duct tape got sand on it, probably from when we were doing donuts. And well, the light, uh, you know, as you can see, this is in bad shape. So I, I got to just hack something together. Um, but again, this is some kind of fibrous, like it's just so brittle. It just crumbles apart in your hands, and it's probably got the asbestos or something in it. I made a new housing extension for it. The bulb snapped in here real good. Yeah, there we go. That takes care of it. Pretty hacked up, but it'll work. I think these doors go against the noise ordinance here. Pretty loud. Lube them up a little bit. Get a little monkey max. Oh, yeah. It's a desert toad. <laughs> you do look special. Oh, he looks poisonous. Look at all the red on him. Oh, he really blends in. Succulents. Well, well, you know, went to go walk away and it caught one to the foot that was just happened to be laying on the ground and it's it hurts a good amount. Right. Luckily, not too bad, but uh... oh man, this thing sticks to you real bad. Holy smokes! Oh, jeez, that was great. Gus, no, no, no. The crazy thing about all this is I was just grazing my fingers along it, no problem. But if you get stabbed by one of those, holy smokes. On a microscopic level, they probably look pretty wild. Stopped in a Mikey's family restaurant for breakfast. 
Big old bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Look at that. Woo! Mm. Today's gonna be some video editing and then maybe taking care of that rear suspension. Look how low she squatted in this parking lot. You know, the, the air, air shocks just didn't take care of it and they got 70 PSI. These two in here taking a little nap. How's that uh, bench seat? Good. I got seat belts in, seat belts in my side here. <laughs> it's okay though. Hello, Ryder. Check it out. Got a couple rear coils available same day. Moog, made in USA. Just to give you an idea, here's what the current springs look like. And I'll stick my fingers in between this rear bump stop. I get three fingers in between there. That's with 70 PSI in the rear shocks. But if I let the air back out of that, the bump stop's now only about a finger's width away from the frame. Got her jacked up, chalked up, wheel stands. Put some tires under the uh, frame. And yeah, I thought these would be a lot easier to just pop on out of here, but they're still pretty tight. Uh, well, I'll take the lower shock bolt off. That'll give us more play. And you know, might be a tight squeeze in the parking lot, but we'll try to get these in. Get the lower shock off, but unfortunately the bushing is shot. I mean, should really put new shocks on it too at this point. The driver's side, I was smart about it and didn't mess with the bushing, took off the whole stud. Should have done that on both sides and I was pushing up and down on these shocks. They actually feel pretty darn good. Should be able to pop these out of here now. Uh, another good idea would be loosening all of the bolts on these bushings so you don't tear the bushings, but I'm not too worried about that right now. They're probably seized to the uh, collars anyway. One. Isolator's still decent too, which is great because they didn't they weren't able to get those today. Here's this side by side. Luckily around the same height, so it shouldn't be too hard getting them in. And here's pushing down on that one. Pushing down. Oh yes, that feels a little nicer. Uh, these progressive springs, the tighter coils go on the top. What do you think, baby? Is it gonna make a difference or what? The one's got a little more pep in her step. If you could step on this, that'd be great. Ow, ow, you stepped on my hand. <laughs> Good. Are you sure, babe? Yeah. Well, getting the other side in was a little bit easier. Ooh. All right, let go. I made it worse than it was. Son of a peach. Uh, excuse me. Damn. Just ran inside the shopper supply to find a two by four or equivalent. It's kind of like a tractor supply. And check out the Milton stock here. A lot of this is made in USA. Okay, right there. Some of it, whoop, dropped itself. Some of it's made in China, but uh, like pressure gauge, made in USA. The old school dual head chuck, made in USA. And look, they got the four foot uh, blow gun. Woo, the big boy. And yeah, these are made in USA too. So really cool to see Milton bringing that back. Cause I know for a while, I thought that was all swapped over to China. This should do it a six foot piece of one inch square 16 gauge made in USA as well. Never mind that one buy was $36. So I got a $19 pry bar made in Mexico, DeWalt, and a bag of popcorn for my baby. There you go. Aren't you the best? Oh, yeah. Nice. You want to sell your El Camino? No. Go for it, man. That's got a big buck in it. Right tool for the job. Good job. Just needed a 42 inch record bar. Oh, I missed the clip. Did you? No. You gotta love how universal the bumper jack is. I can jack this up so I can get the uh, uh, shock back on. Here it goes, the final lowering moment of truth. Go ahead and jounce the suspension. And oh yeah, that made a dramatic difference. It's sitting much higher in the back. Let's take a look underneath. And look at that gap. And fit a fist and then some in there. That's no air in the shocks. That was a very worthwhile investment of time. And uh, what, 90 bucks for the shock or uh, springs. Recognize this place? We have made it back to where the El Camino came from. Yeah, we made it back, Tony. All right. Ride right went smooth. It, cool. Got, got a battery here. Sweet. So Tony's got this GP1200 that, when's the last time it was on the water? 
Um, I've never had it on the water. I bought it from a guy that uh, he had broke his back years ago. It's been in uh, storage for seven years. Okay, so the plan today is throw some air in these tires and maybe take this down to Canyon Lake and give her a go. It's all registered. It looks like a pretty clean unit. Oh yeah, this thing's tight. Really nice. yeah, yeah, he kept this indoors. This is beautiful. Might have to grab a different ball. Oh, uh, yeah, this looks like a two inch probably. <laughs> now, all right, that battery shot. Well, that's a brand new battery, which is disappointing. I'll hook the JF Eggwell up to it, see if that fires it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's actually got 15 volts, so it's, it's pretty nice. A little shot of some carb clean, since that's all we got. Am I going the right way? Yeah. Aren't you a mechanic? <laughs> you know, whoever made inch and seven eighths and two inch balls should be fired. Why both? You know, it's like, yeah. what the heck? <laughs> Perfect weather for jet skiing. Oh, oh. Okay, wipers work awesome. <laughs> Well, the thrift that's master. On it. I don't know if that's like... uh, it's a good company. Oh, really? I thought it was somebody's personal life jacket. The thrift master in action. And? $17 and $1.50. It got the Aqualite <laughs> Rainbow Edition. <laughs> Wonderful. We push. We push. Cut. Is she, uh, she's hitting square? Yeah. To touch, but... Great tip whenever your chains are too long, don't let them drag on the ground, just uh, twist them up a little bit and boom. Okay. Tony just gave Chris road presents, whole stash of zip ties. Yeah. How amazing is Tony for letting us take his jet ski out? Seriously. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. at Canyon Lake. Still about five minutes away from the boat ramp. Oh, well, ski's not starting, so let's see if she help me and I'll pull her out. Oh yeah. Get the bolt meter. Now we, we had this on charge while we were going to get the uh, the new ball and then took it off charge and fired right up. But he said his battery was only a couple months old. Uh, so if anything, let's a uh, super start so we could probably warranty it at O'Reilly's, but let's see what our voltage is. 10.48 volts. So that is not good, but it should have been enough to have it crank. Is there another, there's a fuse here. Maybe this fuse got blown from the high voltage of the jump pack. And it comes with a spare. Gotta love Yamaha. I wonder if that... No, that's good. Both the battery terminals are tight, but I'm gonna try disconnecting it for a minute. Reset the computer. Now, did you hide the kill switch under your life vest or something? Check, check this out, guys. I just noticed on the dash, if you hold that, it's flashing code. And then, and then you can hit digits. Oh, now it's saying start. I just hit A. Oh my God, that's what it was. All right, back in the water. What do we got? Maybe an hour or two of daylight? Well, surprisingly, it 
It's running half decent. Didn't want to idle, but yeah, let's pull the truck out. We got that jump pack with 25%. Here's your bag soaked. And let's do it. It's a dice roll. back weather changed a little bit up the river and i mean it started getting windy crazy white caps uh we couldn't shut the ski off so it was fairly uncomfortable for the, the second half poor little gus uh but it was still nice views at least right tomorrow maybe we'll come back out that was cool they get up back in the dog run saloon since they are dog friendly right. they didn't let, let gus in the hitching post no nope. yeah uh, the hitching post i think yeah Hospitality. <laughs> well, where did we sleep last night? In Tony's driveway. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to trust you. <laughs> Maybe we'll stay here again tonight. So I need a shower. A nice view in the morning. I think the plan today is we're going to take the jet ski down the lake again and uh, first go check into the KOA. Just kind of take it easy. Maybe do some video editing and that uh, let you know how the day goes. Brand new battery for the ski. It was just on the edge of warranty. You get a six month warranty on those. Saloon parking to the right. This is the Goldfield Old Mine Town. <laughs> Big five star for Mammoth Saloon. You ride your motorcycle, your truck, your buggy, your horse. Half the dudes are carrying guns there. Seems like a great spot. Spectacular view. I mean, what'd you think? Pretty cool. Definitely a neat place. It'd be awesome to have a house just down yonder and be able to ride the horse over. And we're back for day two on the lake. Let's see how this jet ski runs with the new battery. Hey Gus, you ready for the water? Yes. No traffic at the ramp. Beautiful. You need a hand at all? Yeah, I need a hand to put in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love. I admire your setup, man. This is this is uh, devotion to to boating <laughs> yeah, and fishing. Fishing, just fishing. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. Look at him, always helping people out. I bet if this guy knew that. Chris sunk his truck in the river back home. He might have asked somebody else. <laughs> that was nice, babe. That dude is a determined fisherman. Nothing stopping he him. He needs to, both knees need to be got operated on. He had a hard time he getting still in. Still finds a way to get out there. Hey, hope he enjoys his night out there. And you can't find the depth finder, right? No, I didn't see it in there now. But we gotta go throw his keys back, right? He's still down there? We'll go ask him. I'm gonna go check on Gussie. All right. All right. New battery, and here we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
great thrift store find, baby. I wonder why they, they uh, got rid of this thing. Dollar fifty special. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Peanut rock. So far, a massive fan of the Salt River. It's uh, Canyon Lake as you get down here, but then it turns into the Salt River up and goes up to a dam, I think maybe five miles up or so. And uh, maybe <laughs> they will have to head up there in a bit, check it out. I was reading you, the uh, lake can fluctuate, or the river or lake can fluctuate a ton depending on how much water they're releasing up at the dam here or, or releasing at the dam just where we launched. <laughs> All right, be careful. Keep the fire going. Christian's fishing me for a little bit. Can I see the end of the canyon? Yeah, it's just gonna zip up real quick and see if we can get up to the dam. in the middle of Canyon Lake on some rock beach. Chris just wanted to take a little solo jet ski ride. He wanted to go fast, but check out this view. That's the dolly. That looks fun. These are the moments I live for. So six minutes up the river and you see it's real sediment filled now. We're just below the dam. I was looking at the map and it turns into a no wake zone right here. Some other people hanging out uh, just down yonder, but I'm gonna head back now. I'm gonna leave Jed more than like 15 minutes. Lincoln, even though it's not low, so it probably needs a fuel sending unit. Uh, but I'd say this thing's pretty tip top. And that's a wrap on the night had an absolute blast on the Salt River and we got the Magic Cycle review coming on the secondary channel on that. It got delivered to Tony's house, just drove back with it sitting on the roof and uh, yeah, start up a little fire, drink cult beers, cold night. Look at this luxurious tent. Morning. Today, probably not too exciting. Gonna build the Magic Cycle, try out that electric bike, and then somehow find a place to put it. We stayed again over at the KOA Apache Junction. Great little campground. And uh, just doing a little carburetor maintenance right now. Finally, I was able to find a spring in stock at, at one of the stores we stopped at. And that's gonna be able to take care of the pumper issue. The one I lost goes underneath of this and keeps it all the way up. So now, uh, get this back together, that'll be fixed back together and you can see that plunger now rides on here like it should so when i hit this it's shooting a stream of gas in there for easy starting or uh, when you accelerate it doesn't bog down now you see the choke is adjusted properly when it's cold this flap should be uh, shut but we're still having a real hard time starting cold like it wouldn't start at all so I'm, maybe the float heights need to be adjusted too but pump roll take care of it gotta grab a new grommet for the breather as well today looks like bottom half of it is inside the engine and jen you remember how hard this was to always start in the morning right I do. let's do three pumps and four pumps boom got the pump perfect awesome. oh yeah Checking in at Lost Dutchman State Park. Check out this semi. It's got the right idea, camping with this big rig. And let's go find our site. This place is all booked up, except uh, plenty of vacancy for the yeah. tent sites that don't have power or water. Or shade. 
Yeah, this one's got shade though. At least it ain't 120 out. It's only what, 89 degrees out? It's not the heat, it's the sun. Yeah, the sun's brutal out here. Gotta love the old heavy duty metal. They can run a hook on there and no damage. I mean, we really did get a much better sight than the other ones because they're all right on top of each other. You can't make noise here in the tent sites. Hey, and nobody can hear me. How about that? And uh, the gold field, I think was the name of it. Ghost town is right there. I'm gonna probably go hit the bar later. Saloon, should I say? Check out this guy doing a review video on the road in the middle of the desert. Always working. Should come in handy on a trip, I'd say. Aye aye, cowboy. There's a coyote right next to me. Oh my god. Are they dangerous? Can you guys see that? And here we have the rare jumping cactus. That's the one that Chris kicked like a soccer ball the other night. Just you and me, bud. Ooh, you don't want to go in there. We don't know what's in that hole. He is very interested in whatever is in that hole. Gotcha. Hello, little bunny. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Bye bye. Well, we found out what one of these holes was. Filming ants. I'm going to pick one ant and see what he does. Oh, ah, in the hole. Lost that one. We are next morning just heading out to get some breakfast and coffee. And then think we're going to pack up and head out of town. Maybe toward Albuquerque or somewhere out that way. Maybe find a hotel since we've been camping. How many nights? Four. Four nights. And uh, car is unfortunately running like turd now. I don't know why. It's got some carburation issues going on. So... We'll have to address that later today. It's okay going down the road, but it's it will not idle unless you double foot it. Gonna hit the coffee cantina over at this gold field again. You see, it's fine driving it around, but then when you come to a stop, you gotta kind of double foot it. Let's see if I let go of the gas. Oh, it's still mm, no. Yeah, there it's idling. But listen to the exhaust. You can hear it's just dumping fuel. I mean, it's idling, but barely. Uh, we gotta get a timing light on it at some point too and, and recheck that carburetor because you know we never did a full cleaning on it reliable enough though right come on guys let's go get some breakfast <laughs> i make a pretty decent breakfast sandwich here and get a nice view off the deck oh it's a good spot got it folks see you another night We are such rednecks. We have arrived. Should get good shade later in the day here. Good view off the picnic bench. What's your pup's name over here? Cloudy Jane. You're it? <laughs> wow. All right, now Dog's got to play the beer. Time to check out and hit the road. See if we can get this bike on here. And we just foam block it up to protect the cap. Not that we care. We care less about the cap than the sheet metal on the car. Tie a piece of webbing around the seatbelt anchor. Use a water knot. Look at that. It's the best knot for uh, webbing. Holds the tightest. And I think that'll do it. We did get a flat tire already, so I gotta get a patch kit today. Finally convinced this girl to get a long sleeve shirt and keep the sun off her skin. How's it I, feel? It feels great. I just soaked it in ice cooler water here. Gonna do a little shopping today, and uh, we're gonna hit the road out of Apache Junction. Finally, right? Jen's favorite, Bush Light, and my new favorite, Modelo. 
we are officially heading into the middle of nowhere. But we got the electric bike. You and me motion in the dark. This is the lake down below Canyon Lake that we were in the other day. Saguaro Lake, and that's the Stewart Mountain Dam right there. Tons of fish. This is all, all the same river, the Salt River. Um, one guy at the bar last night was calling it the uh, the chain or chain of lakes, I think he said. This is some kind of algae on here. It's soft like a sponge. Kind of slippery. And do a good deed for the day. Pick up some of these mellow yellow Red Bull. in now we might end up grabbing a place staying here and hopefully fix the differential leak in the back I'll be checking the level it's not terrible but before we put down serious miles I'd like to rectify that and our first Maverick my favorite oh, cute little space here quality and bike made the trip lots of trees here good to see coming from the desert ah. smells a little musty I wouldn't call it a five-star motel, but so far, no bed bugs. And we got a little patio with green grass for Gus. If he starts like really sniffing and licking the floor around things, then it's like, all right, this place is dirty. Is it zoomy o'clock? <coughs> we gotta bring it over to the park, huh? I guess we're next to a kennel. <laughs> Dollar store forks, multiple uses. One of the easiest way to find a small leak in a tube is just run your lips or face along it. And there it is, I can feel it and hear it. Tiny little pinhole. Now before you go patching it, next step is to identify on the rim where that would be and check the tire, make sure there's nothing still in the tire that's gonna repuncture it. Tire's all clean on the inside, so I'm gonna scuff up the repair area and then I got one of these just self-gluing patches. You don't need any vulcanizing cement, so yeah, we'll see if that holds. And that's done. On the agenda today, quick afternoon pinion seal replacement. Turning into quite the shade tree mechanic. Always looking for a shady spot. This has really started leaking a lot worse. Like I've only been parked here for a few minutes, jacking it up and you can see how many drips. So hopefully this will just be a cake job. I'll take the U-bolt caps off and pop off the pinion and find out what size socket it is. Always mark your drive shafts when you're taking them off with a marker or a scribe or something because a lot of time they're balanced. Now I really should have jacked her up higher, but I'm trying to stay incognito in the parking lot a little bit. So hopefully this job goes real smooth. Oh, one of my caps got stuck in there. We don't want dirt getting in there. So I'll continue this scribe down onto here and then onto the casing too. You also want to mark the pinion itself and the nut. So we put this nut back on the exact same spot that it was since, uh, you know, there's a preload set on the, on these bearings. We want to get it right back where it was. I recommend always using scribing it because the marker can get rinsed off. Now that looks like maybe 30 mil, 32 maybe, or standard. I guess I'll do a quick Google search and get the right size socket would be the better idea. Lube on those threads and parked right in front of the Harbor Freight. So I was able to get a 32 millimeter from what I saw online. That's the right size. Now I do have the wheels chalked. And of course, since these are still kissing the ground, this could roll forward if I try to turn it, but I just applied the brakes uh, and chalked them. Let's see if we get some budge off of this. Oh, shoot. Probably get a, a pipe extension on that. Let's give her one more go. Oh, come on. 
need some leverage. I find a two by four over here, or maybe one of these workers have a half inch Milwaukee impact we could borrow real quick. You don't happen to have a pipe I can slip over the end of this for extra leverage, would you guys? Know? I don't know, I don't. I mean, maybe we look around here, maybe. I want to get some new resources, a 2x4 and a couple pieces of conduit. There it goes. A little leverage with the 2x4, got her to budge. Oh, yeah, yeah, pan down here too. Uh, so, again, I think, like I said, we need a puller to get this off, but maybe we'll get lucky and the yoke just slips off of there. Give her a little love tap. Oh yeah, yeah, it's gonna pop right off. So we... It's a full... Oh, that seal is just rock hard, guys. <laughs> Holy smokes. See if we can get it out with a screwdriver. Clean some of this grime off first would be a great idea. I keep forgetting I got the little $20 warrior drill from the ambulance trip. This thing's actually half decent for 20 bucks. Do it. Come on, baby. Ah, oh, yeah. Tire iron did it. Yeah, this seal is so entirely rock hard. Well, that means the axle seals are probably getting rid of that crap out too. We've got all the critical surfaces cleaned up. No heavy groove on here. Let's make sure the seal fits. Uh, I got it for the GM 10 inch, so it should. Yep, that's gonna be the right fit. Let's check the housing real quick and slap this together. Did get some Loctite, did throw in all the threads too. I like to take some RTV and roll around the seal and really we should have drained out the fluid so nothing's dripping here and get this completely dry, but I don't feel like taking the back cover off. So I'm gonna try to tap this seal into place. You know, they make special tools for this too, like a big socket. Once you get her started, you're good. Yeah, the start is the hard part, and now we're good. And I'll do it. Clean the outside once, and a quick smear of RTV for extra insurance around the whole thing. In case there's a scratch in the case or deformity or something or void. Well, silicone insurance never hurt anybody. Just don't get it on the seal lips. Now, if you got some high temp wheel bearing grease, put it on this lip and on the inside lip of the seal. But I just put uh, gear oil on there, that'll be fine. And line her back up the way she came off, uh, put everything together, you know, snug the nut back down the, to the exact same place that it was. All lined up just make sure you get the grit out of again all, all the critical surfaces clean the threads if you're going to be using loctite and on the caps oh and make sure to check your u-joint that it spins freely this one's greasable but otherwise i'd suggest packing them with grease while it's off at least the two caps and rock, oh, rocking it this way this one's actually a little tight but that i don't feel like replacing that right now and that could be from Somebody hammering these caps on too tight or just a bunch of grime in there. So we'll just grease it at a later time. Cool. And that's all fixed. Topped her off, double checked the vent. Should be good. We'll check it uh, later down the road. We only got one bicycle and Jen had a great idea. Get some pegs. The only problem is this has got a 12 mil axle and most pegs take 3 8 So we got some uh, lug nuts from AutoZone, 12 by 125. Going to cut the acorn caps off and then use a bolt from it. Watch, it's going to be cool. You'll see. She's kind of going around the world a few times on this with the ratchet to get her nice and straight. Cause I didn't realize the AC acorn caps were going to be so thick. Look how thick they are. Uh, usually, you know, you could just hit the ends off. I got the stainless caps on them, but these are these are solid. And it's a straight cut. Oosh yeah. Spin on the other way. Nuger down, we got a hose cut, put this on, thread this in. Should I try them out? 
Yeah, give them a go. They look straight on there. I'd rather... <laughs> Here, I'll stand on it. Oh, yeah. Wow. No problem. So you can sit on it. We'll put a foam pad on the back. She can sit here. It's now a two-seater. Custom bike pegs. And easily removable. We just spin those bolts off, and then when we're putting it down on the roof, they won't be pegging through the uh, fiberglass. I am such a lucky gal. I got it. I don't know. No, I got it. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Comfy. This is our maiden tandem voyage. It's gonna be a wheelie monster now. <laughs> we decided to go for a little cruise up some mountain roads or forest roads. I don't know. The guy at the uh, restaurant last night said that Doll Baby Road was worth checking out. So uh, hopefully, catch a decent sunset and see what it's all about. We're only like a mile outside of town and it's already turned into dirt road, so that's pretty cool. It's my kind of town. Been seeing off-road vehicles all through Payson, so there must be a ton of trails around here. It's, it's safe. There's no exposure. <gasps> Like we could make it up this no problem, but we don't want to damage the car. So just kind of chilling, checking things out. Stunning views up here. Oh, there's a boulder blocking the trail anyway. Well, I guess you can still skate by that on the right. You know, the camera probably can't see, show how steep this really is. But uh, I'd say it's pushing, pushing the old El Camino's limits. I guess you don't like hills. Because hills don't have to start back up no matter what. Let's get off a hill somehow. Take your time. <laughs> There's a rock behind this one. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I got it. Up on the flat. Yeah, so it's right back up on the flats. I wonder, maybe that uh, float height in the carb is too low? It's possible. Well, he did it again. I'm embarrassed to show you guys this. These sunglasses must just be too good because the boulder we just ran over it's bad. We might just cause some damage, but you have to bumper jack it up off. Wait till you see this thing. But when we hit it, it made a screeching. We get the jack stand because you wouldn't want to go under a car with the tires on with the bumper jack on. Someone's in a mood, huh? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, missed that one. Whoops. Guess I won't leave it right in the middle of the trail. Not that we were. We were off the trail. Okay, hopefully uh, we didn't cause any damage. Do you want to check it out before we... Well, we'll start it up and see if it's still making that horrible noise. I think we might have hit the torque converter cover and maybe bent that up, hitting the flex plate. It made a horrible noise. As I suspected, we tore open the torque converter cover. Got very lucky that we didn't put a hole in the oil pan or the trans pan. And hopefully that luck will continue with not having damaged any of the teeth. There we go. Oh, so far the teeth look good. Yeah, go ahead. One more. Again. Tiny little ones, go ahead. One more. All right, awesome. All the teeth look great. Yeah, I got a nice sunset out here. Could have been a lot worse because we are many miles from town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But came out for the, the beautiful mountains and the, the trails and right I guess, and, well, I just forgot that I don't have a truck. It's just not a truck. <laughs> <laughs> 
we'll bend it back and put it on while we're while we're out here and it's jacked up. Perfect. Like now. Have the pegs feel on the bike. The pegs are great. My butt, not so much. <laughs> yeah, we took a late night ride over the casino and uh, see what it's all about. Of course, you can't film in here. So. Well, the electric bike hauls the whole family around with the pegs on there and Gus comfortably in his little sack. It's working well. Laid down about five miles last night heading to the casino and back around midnight. <laughs> Taking the dirt road to the Dollar Tree. I need to get a better cushion for my butt. Sweet old Toyota. Used to have one of these, uh, a 1988. Love these trucks. Hey, we're out cruising the bike and this guy's got this beautiful 73 C10 with a 383 stroker. About to fire it up. Let's see. Oh yeah. I see him load lumber out of the truck. I asked if it was for sale. He said, nah, you can come check it out though. That's beautiful. That's nice. long tube headers on there. That guy's name was Terry and he ended up being super cool. He gave us a tour of his uh, music studio and, and gave us some- Gave us a couple of his original CDs. Yeah, that was- Can't wait to listen to that. Asked him if his truck was for sale and it ended up being a, a good time. And there she is waiting for us. Time to hit the road and you know, make at least a few hours today, get somewhere.
Well, we were chug-a-lugging up that hill a little bit. Might be running out of gas, but look at that sky. Holy smokes. It's on fire. You guys all right? Oh yeah, we're good. Just checking out the sunset. Filling up at the steer stop in Magdalena, New Mexico. We did a true 186.5 miles on the GPS. This will be the first time calculating the fuel mileage after running on all the cylinders. Came out to 15.6 miles to the gallon. I'll take it. It's not quite the 17 and a half we saw before, but not bad. Look at this. This is probably killing our mileage. I bet you this is... I'm have to tie that down. There's only one liquor license in the whole town. One liquor license? Just one. It's not here, I take it. <laughs> no. We have made it to Socorro. I have some bad news. What happened? There's roaches. Roaches? Yeah. Where? Right over there, on the wall. I was just gonna say, we live in large tonight. Look at this place. 80 bucks for the night. Yeah, where'd he go? There he is, right there. Oh, whatever. And how's the checks going for room number two? Good. Double the price, but no cockroaches. Good stuff. So, trying to upload the next video, having horrible service, but hopefully gonna get it done in this bar. The Capitol, what's this place called? Capitol Brewery? came outside the bar and there's a 1995 town car squatting down the back assuming it has air suspension but uh they got the hood popped and figured they might you know might need some help look at these leather seats how many miles are on this rig anyway 297 oh there goes my elbow and uh so this is the setup i mean they said they said it's not stolen and i do believe me he said it's been the family for 13 years <laughs> <laughs> and their grandfather did a lot of crazy work on it. I think we, we got a case of maybe just a blown fusible link, so I'm going to see if we got some wire to get this, this thing fired up. You got a lot of wires. What are all these other ones going? I don't know. Well, it's his car. <laughs> that's how you have a speedometer. We're going to just go ahead and hook the old JF Eggwo up. Right. Hell yeah. yeah. Good morning. Morning. Uh, this morning we're heading out of Socorro. Pretty late, actually. It's almost afternoon. Slowest internet ever in this town, but we were able to get the part two video uploaded. And now we're heading to Roswell, uh, do some camping, maybe run into some cool aliens. stuff today. I want to see aliens. some aliens. We passed through San Antonio and had to stop seeing this ambulance for sale. Unfortunately, just noticed it's box only, but uh, automatic transmission, old desert cruiser right here, Sierra Classic 35 GMC square body from the 70s. This thing is beautiful. <laughs> oh man. Oh, Peterbilt flatbed or rollback. digging how New Mexico's got all these scenic pull-offs with picnic benches most of them covered or taking a break hanging out walking the pooch and I guess these are some kind of lava formations oh yeah these definitely lava rocks good grip on this wow it's really neat she's a beaut right there there it is Gus will love this found him a stick cactus Skeleton. Just passed through Corazozo. It's looking like we might run into some rain in the near future. Rain. So probably gonna cover up the electric bike. Let's see if this clears up our next minute. Smokey's Country Market. Five twenty-five for canned soup. What? Tropicana seven thirty-five. Dollar. 
Void carrots. Car is seeming to shut off. Probably out of gas. It's checked out in a while. We have a pretty. Oh, there she is. Let's pull off here. We got a little roadside table. You felt that though, just like shut off altogether. Oh, yeah, I felt it. Oh, it's a way station. Great. We don't have any backup gas? No, we, we do. We do. Ugh. Oh yeah, she's pretty darn low down to the foam block. So you get a little bit in the front. Pickup's on the front though, so I think we'll just tilt her forward some and continue going. I don't think we're gonna make it without right. filling it, without dragging the tank, but we'll keep going for a little bit because we're doing what? Uh filling the tank. It's I tilted it forward, so. But you don't want to get the other gas tank I mean, out? Let's just see how far we make it. We're only 15 miles from Roswell, so with the tank tilted forward, we'll just dice roll it. Big shoulder in case we got to stop. He just told me to reach out the window and hold the cardboard down so that we're more aerodynamic. <laughs> oh, she shut off. All right. We didn't make it. We didn't make it. It's not rolling, though. Can we roll to Roswell? We're only seven minutes away. This hill, if we get over this, we might continue going. We're still rolling. Yeah. We just came up a fairly steep little hill there. Now we got some good speed. Now we're on the downswing. 3.7 miles. Only 2.9 <laughs> miles to go now. We're still doing 40 mile an hour. I wonder if any of these people know we're out of gas right now. 45 mile an hour. This is insane. And we're like not even on a, it looks flat. All downhill. There must be a river in Roswell. 1.6 miles away. We got to the traffic light, but we are gonna have to stop before we stop sign because yeah. We'll have to yeah, we didn't make it, but not that far away. We rolled pretty far there. That's why we carry five gallons of spare gas. Always. Trying to make it within a mile of the gas station. Yeah, we're back on the road. One mile we got to hit a gas station though for sure. And we made it. In my defense, that tank was advertised as 15 gallons on eBay. I just measured it with what we put in there. It's only 12 gallons. So, you know, a Redemp little redemption there because uh, it's like probably look pretty bad here. How do you keep running that gas every trip? I guess I just like pushing the limit. Push it to the limit. Roswell Donuts. We have made it to Roswell. Push it to the limit. Some people come for all the tourist attractions. We like to just drive into towns and cruise the streets, checking out the locals, potentially meeting people. Oh, look, we got two friends up here. Oh my gosh. Is that normal in Roswell? Now, where are you two going? <laughs> you seem at home. Like, yeah, we got places to be, buddy. Hi. Oh, this place seems like it's usually raging. We stopped over at Backdraft Brewery and it's completely dead, but it's happy hour. Look at that, Friday, Saturday, 3 to 6 p.m. They're kind of just in there looking at us. <laughs> These trusses on this building. Gus likes the pickle beer. <laughs> pickle beer. Good? Yum. Mm -hmm. I think this is the best brisket I've ever had in the coleslaw. It's incredible. I know. This it's place, unbelievable. This place is a hidden gem. We're at about 20 minutes outside of town now to go to the bottomless pits, right? Or campground? <laughs> the bottomless lakes. Yeah. The bottomless lakes. Well, I can definitely see the bottom. <laughs> We're going to spend the night here. And might go look at one other site, but for now we snag this one, take the bike out, scope some others. Uh, Gus has got to stay in the cage because he went out once and he got a bunch of little pin prick thorns. Here they are, these little guys in his foot. And then he yelped like crazy when we pulled him out. Well, we headed back to Roswell, got a motel because Jen didn't want to do the camping. No, I love camping. I just well, wanted to see the nightlife in Roswell, New Mexico. And right across from our hotel is Farley's. They got circuit boards built into the uh, 
bar top there, kind of cool. Right. Jen didn't like the sound of crickets. False. I love crickets and I love camping. Well, good morning from Roswell. Well, it's the first rainy day we've had on this whole trip, I think. Oh, besides the, the duct tape drag little sprinkle, but I should have put the bike on the truck last night and tarped it. Cause now, and Jen just spotted the most gigantic cockroach ever. Finger for reference. Probably not a great day to travel. Uh, we got no defroster. Lights are barely working. Car is not happy. Not running very well. Oh, there's a big there. Oh my god. How's he staying dry in there or what? No. <laughs> so many drips. Next stop, Texas. Probably uh, take it easy today. You see this tarp got pretty destroyed in the hurricane going down the road. It's one way to break a tarp in. That flap in, turn this into like paper mache. It's about to rip all the way through. This is good for when we're stationary, but definitely not going down the road. Getting into oil country. Texas State Line. Through Brownfield, we saw some cheap gas, only three nineteen a gallon here. So that's positive. Ooh, is that a big pothole? What is that? Yeah, I guess the fields are pretty brown around here. Just had to spin a U-turn because look what's for sale right here. Ooh. Ooh rust. Rusty? Yeah. She's a little rusty. Automatic Texas. Oh, look at this old Evan Rood. What is this? Cool snow, snowmobile skater. 3500 bucks does not run. Hmm, that could be kind of cool. What do you think? You want to drive this thing home instead? Whatever you want. <laughs> I guess we'll pass up on it for now. I think it's still going to get this thing running better. Listen to the way it's islands. place a1 auto parts Let's see what it's all about how's it going pretty good what's up grab some wiper blades I'm sure they're not dried out at all sweet little auto parts store for sure I'm gonna have to open up the drains on this door we're full of water here cannot get going again and we're not out of gas uh, I think our carb is just done for because uh, I can I can get it started but we're just we're fully clogged up and as we've been dropping altitude it's been getting worse and worse and worse and finally now it's just it's just not getting enough fuel so I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is rig up the choke so it's partially closed and that'll get us somewhere I just stuff some paper in there we'll keep it that shut All right, I think with that choke partially shut we should be able to run it a little bit longer and Nah, it just keeps shutting off. Maybe we got a blocked fuel filter, I'm not sure. Been getting progressively worse throughout the day though, but now it's to a point where like you just can't even drive it. Checking for fuel flow while we're cranking. Yeah, see, plenty of gas, but wow, that almost looks like water in there. But I don't understand how that could have happened. It's super cloudy, though. All right, that guy was going back down the road, stop at the next gas station, get some new gas, and then find out how much more water we got in there. I did the old uh, cover over the intake up and wrapped it so hopefully that would suck up all the water on the bottom of the car 325 for gas here yeah look how much water was on the bottom of that sample i got out of the filter it's starting to separate look at that wow that would explain our running issues today i have no idea how that all got in there i mean nothing to do with the rain because the tank is inside of the bed before we go fill in this tank i just started it one more time to take another sample and yeah it's all cloudy too so i'd, I'd love to almost pump out what's in there but that's just off of cranking it one more time and look at look at this it's three quarter full 
and half full of something that's not the same as gasoline. Well, we didn't fill the tank there. Gonna try to burn the rest of that crummy gas out and then fill it. If we have run out, we get the five gallon jug. Okay, we ran another 20 miles, so it ran out of gas. I took the foam out of the tank. I'm gonna get rid of that for now. Put it up on the roof and check it out. Here's what the inside looks like. That's what we're left. Look how much water is in both those little puddles. I don't know how well you can see it. So now I'm gonna soak that up and we'll fill it with fresh gas out of the jug and then get to a gas station. Last thing I did is with the fresh fuel, I took the return off and we're filling this cup to see what comes out. Getting pretty close. Uh, you know, since that's what still would have been in the system. Shut this off. Let's see how that looked coming out of the return. Yep, still cloudy. So that should be the rest of the bad gas. Yeah, there it is. On the, on the bottom. And doing one more sample. Look at that, it's coming out nice and clean. All right, you shut it off. All right, excellent. Now I put this return back on and we've got good gas. No. And it was a long day. We only banged out 315 miles from Roswell, but uh, we checked into a Witten Inn in uh, Abilene. Nice clean room. Might spend a day or two here and uh, check out the town, but kind of nice to get out of the rain. Get out of that bag, what are you doing? Buffalo sticky wings. We just happened to stumble into a Cowboys Eagles game. I don't know who won, but it was interesting to see all the Cowboys fans. Anyhow, my parents hooked us up with the rewards points, so we got free wings. Hashtag not sponsored by Buffalo Sticky Wings. Thanks, Mom and Dad. You're the best. So uh, today, I'm gonna finally tear into this carb and figure out why the idol has gotten so bad. We're still here in Abilene. As I think I was saying, the idol has gotten worse and worse as we dropped altitude, and that tells me it's not getting enough fuel. Originally, I thought it was running too rich, but I'm hoping it's just a clogged up idle jet. And we'll pop that carb cap off, see what's up. I mean, the weird thing is this started all the way back at in Arizona when I put the spring in for the pumper, and I didn't change anything else. So, I don't know, maybe the idle jet just sucked up a piece of crud or something. And I'll just show you how bad it starts. I mean, if you go to turn the key, it's not going to start at all. It's just going to crank and crank and crank. Oh! No, and then, then it's dulled out. And that's with the choke. I'm surprised it even did that. Now, if I hit the pedal, you know, a few times, hit that pumper, it'll fire right up. But it's not going to idle. See? It'll just shut off. And the only way to get it to idle, hit that three times. And then, as it's idling, you just... Give it a pumper, give it a pump, give it a pump. And you keep doing that until it's warmed up and then it's it's more drivable, drivable when it's warmed up. But here's, here's a listen. No, yeah, it's just not getting any fuel at night. Let's, uh, let's see what's up. You know, I should probably just take this carb off and do a full cleaning, bench clean on it, but we don't have the proper shop. And, and really the beauty of carburetors is they don't have to be dialed in perfect to work well. Um, and, and if there's a problem, it's right before your eyes. You can take it apart and visually inspect the problem. Ooh, the float height looks pretty darn low. Here's what I did. Pulled the air fuel ratio screws out, sprayed through all the holes and the slow jets, which are right here, or the idle jets. And everything seems to be blowing through just fine. So I'm gonna make a slight uh, float height adjustment and hope maybe this problem's fixed. Otherwise the carb's coming off. Well, I got it all back together. And I must say that the air fuel screws are out a lot further than they probably should be, but got it idling pretty good now. And when you put it in the gear, it doesn't stall anymore. We'll uh, say that's fixed, I guess. So we hit the road and find out otherwise. And I did make sure and check for vacuum leaks. I know it sounds like a bad vacuum leak, but that's just because the air cleaner's off right now. Uh, and it does have the EGR block off plate, it looks like. See, with the air cleaner on, no vacuum noise. I ran up to the hotel lobby to get another coffee and check this guy out. Nugget is his name, the hotel cat. What's up, buddy? Just hanging out, huh? Next on the agenda today is doing a range test on the Magicycle for the other review video, but I did want to see what's in this fuel uh, before I go throwing this out. I don't know how well you guys can see this on camera, but look at the line separation. I mean, they are just, they do not like each other, whatever different fluids they are. Let's pour some out, see what it looks like. Well, there's the sample and it almost does smell like gasoline. Let's do a burn test on it. Piece of cardboard in here. Yeah, it is burning, but not like gasoline. That was burning like alcohol or something. I'll bet you what's sitting on the top is gasoline. Check it out, if we spin it around, then we'll do a dip test on that without mixing them together. You see what's up here? Oh yeah, yeah, that's gasoline. 
will spark right up with, with like a spark. Yeah. Hopefully that showed you the difference. So whatever's on the bottom of here is flammable. I just don't know what it is. So I'll have to save this for later. One thing's for sure, the engine did not like it. Check it out. Mix it up. That's what it looks like. Like water and fuel. Very weird. Time to go enjoy the bike and then probably go out for some dinner later. Good afternoon. We are finally heading out to, out of Abilene and uh, spent a few days there. Today's gonna be just a travel day, I think. We're trying to make some miles. Late start, it's about noon. Well, we'll see what we can do. Stop at every hundred miles for gas. It's kind of interesting on the highways here in Texas. See, if I get off this exit, we got a frontage road on each side, which is a two lane road. But as you're coming off doing 65 mile an hour, see, you, they have a yield sign and they have one there too. So technically I could just whiz right onto this two lane road and oncoming traffic is supposed to yield to me. It seems, you know, kind of, kind of dangerous. I don't know. But the cool part about it is you can get on and off the highway so easily. So we just popped off there and look, now the oncoming is supposed to yield to me as I get back on the highway. It's, uh, I don't think I've seen it like that before. Someone ought to warn him for I knock him off his chair. Cause my long hair just can't cover up my red day. Smokeaholic barbecue. Oh yeah, looks delicious. Passing through Dallas, fair bit of traffic. The boys are thirsty in Atlanta. There's beer in Texarkana. We're gonna bring it back no matter what it takes. Bump, bump, bump. He's and down, loaded up and trucking. We're gonna, gonna do, do what, what they, they say can't, can't be done. done. Texarkana. I think we're in a book of room here tonight. Check out the scene. Banged out 360 miles. Jen's doing her hotel inspections. What'd you come up with? I didn't see any bed bugs or roaches. We got a pretty cheap room, but luckily it seems very clean and nice. <laughs> we're in Texarkana, so might as well go check out a local dive bar. <laughs> Put a cap on part three of this El Camino adventures. Uh, we're still down here in Texarkana and the next video there's a uh, 1970 Lincoln Continental Mark III that I'm potentially interested in maybe swapping out the El Camino for it. I, I don't know it's pretty rough so that the next video is going to be doing a, a, a will it run on that and seeing seeing what it's all about and if we can uh, can maybe swap out but yeah I guess that'll be a part four so I'm not sure where it will go but it will probably end end the trip I would I would think unless we meet you know somebody else that uh, you never know what you're gonna run into out here I mean it's uh we're, we're so happy and thankful for all the, the really great people we've met throughout this trip uh, Tony you know huge thank you to you the hospitality you and your friends there in Apache Junction there's also been a bunch of the viewers of the channel that we run into at the gas stations at Walmart. It's, it's really fun to meet you guys. Oh, and a massive shout out to you that left donations and tips on the last video in the comments. The, the, the super thanks. Uh, I mean, that's that super generous out of you and, and can't thank you enough. That definitely helps out with, with uh, the costs of these trips and such. It uh, offsets it dramatically. So thank you very, very much. And there's probably a bunch more I could say, but I think we'll end this video now with a few pictures and Jen singing and then uh, maybe a couple of clips that didn't make the cut originally. So thanks very much. See you next time.
completely rust free. This is where the magic happens. This is where the misery happens. <laughs> I'd rather be wrenching on that or another car, so. Well, it's always nice to have some history, and look what else. I was, that's great. We got some, uh, 311 Is that Daddy's sock? Actually, 311 <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for a train, and I was feeling Good enough for me and my Bobby McKee. 